Want to get more sales without being salesy? Well, you've come to the right place. Check this out. This is the Sales Gorilla Podcast. All right, welcome back to the Sales Gorilla Podcast. Probably the most kick-ass podcast in your ear holes all week because you got me and you got Landon Porter. I mean, what else could you want in the world besides Nathan Frazier and Landon Porter in your ear holes once a week? Landon, how are you doing today, man? I'm laughing my ass off, Nathan. How are you today? I'm doing fantastic, man. I'm, I, I love, this is like my favorite time of the week is getting on the call with you and uh, just going over, going over business, man. That's why I love doing what I do. Yep. It's one of my favorite things to talk about. Nice. So you know what, what are we going to be talking about today? Oh, I hope you brought your Kleenex and a blankie because today somebody's going to get their ass kicked. I think it's time to have a, a wake up call and a reality check. I've had, I've had some conversations and I've, I've been paying attention to, to conversations specifically around it is or it is not working in my world and other worlds around the getting clients and doing business and sales world. And, um, I'm, I'm privy to a couple of other people in our space, their courses and what they teach and how they teach it. And there seems to be a segment of the population who are doing a thing and they're good at it and they've been doing it for a long time and they're struggling to get clients. And I think it's something that needs to be brought up as a reminder on a regular basis. You got to swing more than once, right? In baseball, an excellent batting average is like a third of the time. That's like Hall of Fame, right? And there's, there's a lot of people that go, man, I, I reached out to three people last week and I didn't get a client. And I'm like, Duh. Man, I sent 17, I sent 17 messages to people that I've done business with in the past and started a conversation. And I know they all want and need this thing. And I asked them, Hey, do you want this thing? And nobody raised their hand. Duh. Right? Like what we talked about last week, you got to have the who and what it is that they want and when they want it and why they want it. You got to have those things nailed. Once you've got those things nailed, it makes it really easy to get clients. But until you have those things nailed, you ain't going to get it done with a half a dozen or a dozen conversations. I talked to 12 people and, and nobody bought my thing. Really? That's amazing. <laughs> I, did a, I did a Facebook Live in the group the other day for Coffee with LP. Um, I don't know when you're going to be hearing this episode, but I might still be doing those. And I was talking about when I was in the sales arena, when I was a, a phone monkey. When I started, the quota daily was 300 phone calls a day. 300 phone calls a day for a new person should end up with four potential clients by the end of the day. Do the math, right? That's, that's having 20 to 25 conversations all the way to the end where you, can, where you say, do you want the thing? Uh, maybe I need to talk to my neighbor's dog's wife right? That might be considered a potential. At the end of the month, 300 calls a day, five days a week should turn into between five and 10 clients when you're new. Now, because we've got social media and the ability to connect with people, it shouldn't take that many swings at the bat. But you can't come to me and say, man, I sent out 12 messages and nobody signed up. Yeah you need to have at least a half a dozen to a dozen conversations with people that are probably the right fit, who probably want and need the thing, who probably it's the right time for, who probably want it the way that you do it before you end up with a client or two. And then as that happens, you can hone that process and optimize it. And the better you get nailing your ICA, right? And your message and your offer, and you optimize that, the easier it is to talk to six people and get a client and then talk to six people and get two clients and then talk to six people and get five clients. But here's the head check. You can't get up and swing three or four times at something that's not proven and it turn into clients. 
it just doesn't work that way. Okay. So a couple of things. Number one, I deal with this or I dealt with this deflation. You get told no, you get told no, you get told no. And by the fifth or sixth no, you don't even want to step up to bat again. And especially if you're not somebody who's in sales, if you're somebody who I do chiropractor, chiro, chiropractory, I don't know what the word is. I do uh, auto body repair. I'm a plumber. I'm a SEO website guy. That's what I do. I don't, I don't do well with getting rejected 15 times to get a yes. I went in, that's why I learned how to copyright because it's a lot easier to send people to a sales page. I can, I can send a thousand people to a sales page, 80 people buy. I close, uh, you know, 8% of the people, 92% of the people reject me, but I don't have to deal with it personally. My website deals with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But guess what? This is where I get a pushback a little bit. Fucker, you're always doing that to me. Check this out. <laughs> you know what it took for you to get good enough at writing copy for a sales page and then the ability to drive traffic? You had to figure out the who. You had to figure out what they wanted and needed. You had to figure out when it was the right time for them. And you had to understand why they would choose you over somebody else. Yeah, I know. That's how this works. And you can go the long route or you can go the short route. And the long route, is, well, I had three conversations in the last 30 days and I've got like two people that might have a conversation with me this month. Or you can have 10 conversations a week, every week for five or six weeks and have it nailed or pretty damn close. So one of the hard things about selling is since we're little kids, we're programmed with two things like beaten into our heads from our parents, from everybody. Don't talk to strangers. Don't ask people for money. And in sales, you have to talk to strangers and you have to ask strangers for money. So, and you have to deal with rejection. Nobody likes rejection. What are your thoughts on the average person who's not a salesperson? They're just really good at the thing. How do they get over those three hurdles? If they're actually good at their thing, everything we teach, you can go spend literally 20 to 30 hours in our free group and learn how to overcome all of that shit. And just as a recap, in case you're new to this podcast, if you identify people that you would naturally get along with and you've got an understanding of who it is that wants and needs your thing and you just be your weird ass self, it's really easy to initiate conversations. And then you can even spend a little bit of time in even our free group and figure out how to create a mechanism that pulls those kind of people to you. But I'm going to totally shift gears and, and even switch lanes on you. Nathan, have you ever made eggs? Have you ever cooked eggs? Mm -hmm. Did they come out perfect the first time you made eggs? No. Did that terrify you for making eggs the second time? Uh, no, because there was no public humiliation involved. Yeah. So guess what? By being your weird ass self and just being who you are, there's no need for public hum humiliation. And if you're actually good at the thing you do, you've got a fairly good idea of who it is that wants and needs that thing. Here's the whole purpose for getting clients without being salesy. It's not about pitching somebody. It's not about jumping into somebody's DMs with a nine paragraph. Here's why they're stupid if they don't get your thing. It's peopling. Peopling. It's easy. Hey, what's up? Saw that post you did. That was pretty rad. After maybe you like sent them a friend request and then went through their stuff and liked one or two things. And then a couple of days later, you went and short commented on something else, right? You create some presence, establish a little bit of awareness and build some authority before you ask them that question. It's called social currency. You can find it for free in our main group, right? Here's the thing. There is no magic button. There's no magic button. There's no shortcut. There's no tactic. There's no hack. You got to have an idea of who. You got to have a pretty solid idea of the message that they are going to respond to. And you've got to have an offer that makes sense. How do you get that? You must have conversations, period. Mm -hmm. Right? And it does, I do want to say it does get easier over time. I've been writing copy for about six, five or six years now. And the first 
probably the first two years, first maybe two and a half years, I really struggled with this. And I didn't actually get good at it until I started having conversations with you and I started learning the stuff that you teach uh, above and beyond what's in the Facebook group. But um, the numbers game aspect of it, the, the idea of you kind of mentioned you have to step up to the bat and keep swinging in order to hit a home run every once in a while. How do you think about that or how should somebody think about that when it comes to um, understanding for every certain amount of no's is just a step closer to a yes? I like to think about it from the 80-20 perspective and, and I want to make a really clear distinction before I, before I say the rest of that. If you're brand new at the thing that you're going to go sell, your numbers game, the percentage of yeses for noes is going to be a lot smaller than if you're actually really good at the thing that you do. And there's only one way to get really good at the thing that you do. Time and effort. Nathan, you've been writing copy for five or six years. It's taken you probably three or four years to get damn good at copywriting. And it took you two or three years to get good at having conversations with people to where you can say, oh, you want that. Oh, and you want it like this. And you want it because of that reason. And the reason you and I are talking is because you're also like, you know, interested in free market and free speech. And, you know, you're a capitalist like me. Ah, got it. How did you get there? By having conversations, right? That percentage, the close ratio, gets better and better and better over time the more you understand who, what, and why. And the only way to get there is to have conversations. If you're good at what you do and you've just not been very good about reaching out to people, it really should be the 80-20. If you have 10 convers, let, let, me, let me back up even farther. If you initiate 10 conversations, you might end up having two conversations. Well, out of 10 conversations you have, two of those people might turn into a client. If you're good at what you do and you're not very active about initiating or eliciting conversations with people that kind of fit the mold, right? It should be 80-20. And then the better you get at having those conversations and the more honed your message and your offer gets and the more picky and specific you get about your ICA that goes from 80-20 to 70-30 and then 50-50 and then pretty soon you're, you're talking to 10 people and you're bringing on seven or eight or nine clients, mm -hmm. right? I think a lot of what I've learned from you is making sure that at the way that you put yourself out there only people who are pretty much pre-closed anyways are having those conversations with you. So back in the day, before I, before I kind of started riding on your coattails and mimicking the stuff I saw you doing, uh, I was having conversations pretty frequently with people that just weren't qualified to work with me or I wasn't qualified to work with them. And I was not closing very many. But now, because I do a lot of filtering out before we even get to that conversation, it's a lot easier to just have a relaxed conversation with them, get straight to the point and close them um, because they're pretty much already sold before we even start that conversation. So it's interesting um, in the quote unquote sales training world, there's this old saying that goes back to the the eighties and it's actually from a movie, Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, Right. Leads are leads are leads are leads are leads are leads are leads. Bullshit. Because everybody has this preconceived notion of what that, what that term leads means. There's a difference between a lead and a prospect. What you're talking about is you went from targeting leads, anybody who could maybe might possibly eventually someday, hopefully maybe buy to a very narrowed group of people that were highly targeted and selected based on experience that came from having conversations. And those people are prospects. A prospect is much more likely to be a good fit, want and need the thing, it be the right time, and be in alignment with you and who you are, which means, yeah, they're pre-sold. And that conversation's stupid easy. So basically... 
just because you strike out the first couple of times, you have to keep getting up to bat. And the more times you get up to bat, the more likely you are to hit home runs more frequently and more consistently. Right. I used the egg analogy earlier. The one that we've commonly used on the, on the show is, you know, when babies start learning how to crawl, they don't give up the first or third time that the pajama arm on their onesie slips and they hit the ground again. Right. And then they go from learning how to crawl to like pulling themselves up and standing. Well, guess what? The third or fourth or eighth time that their butt hits the floor, they don't quit. Right. Same thing with walking and then running and then jumping it. You got to let go of being perfect. And, and you asked a question a little bit ago that I didn't really answer. It's not easy, but it's not hard. It just takes some doing. Here's the wake up call. You know what to do. You know who to do it with. Go do the doing and do enough of the doing to where you get good at it. Getting clients is not hard, period. Okay. You mentioned the free Facebook group a couple of times. And in my opinion, it's one of the most valuable. I hate Facebook groups, man. I'm going to be, I'm going to be straight up and honest with you. I don't spend any time in any Facebook groups except for yours and my own private one, but that one's a little bit different. But most business Facebook groups, I just, I can't stand. So if people want to check out the Facebook group and get some of the free stuff and maybe move up the ladder that you have, where can they go? You can just do a search in Facebook for Gorilla Army Nation, or you can go to facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash Gorilla Juice. Nice. And the podcast, where can people check out more episodes of this podcast? Salesgorillapodcast.com, bitches. <laughs> All right, man. Uh, fantastic wake up call. And hopefully, hopefully it wasn't too bitter for some of the people out there to swallow because I think it, it is a bitter pill, but it's a pill that is good medicine. Hey, if the thing that you do, you're good at and you want to do it and you want to have impact on other good people, you got this. Just do a little bit of the doing. Awesome. All right, man. Until next time, I will catch you later. Peace out, Cub Scout. <laughs>